Hi guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, you guys, today we are going to make these little, I'm calling them junk journal armoires. Let's see, junk journal secret armoires. So, these are them, two of them that I've made. Let me open up this one. And I'll show you what is in here. Voila! And there's a pocket inside and tags. Oop, that came off a little bit. Hopefully that goes back down. So there's another, there's a tag there. Another beautiful tag and another tag. So let's put all these back in here. And there we go. And then let's wind this back up. So I hope that's a good name. Um, junk journal secret armoire is that what i want to call it junk journal secret armoire i'll get the name situated before i post this video but i do want to call it like a little armoire because look it reminds me of like a little armoire for the junk journal and then this paper here is um well let me explain this this paper here is the dividers in one of my um old um planners isn't that beautiful I love it. Then this right here is um, paper from my uh, printables that I created. Okay. And if you're interested in the printables, uh, my Etsy shop is below. Every five pages is two bucks. And I will um, show you guys the printables in my, uh, my Bridgerton junk journal um, at the end. Um, so you open it up here again. This is, um, from my printables from my Bridgerton inspired printables. And then this back here is that, um, is that, uh, what do you call it in my planner, my, the dividers in my planner. So I took all the dividers out because it was all this type of, um, um, papers, which I absolutely love. Aren't they gorgeous? very vintage and I really really love it okay so have some tags in here and my my uh, journal is Bridgerton inspired journal and it's all about the bee if you watch that movie you'll understand what the uh, significance of the bee is in the movie so put that in here and then close that up And I'm doing a Bridgerton inspired junk journal challenge. So if you're interested in it, um, I will link a video at the end. It'll be on the screen and you can just tap on it and you can check out the whole challenge. Also, um, you don't have to order my Bridgerton inspired printables to be in the challenge. You can if you want to. Um, and uh, that link is below. Okay, so let's get started on making this. Uh, these are so fun to make, you guys. Okay. First of all, oh, and these again are my printables. I love this right here, the Bank of Prosperity, because they are so about, they really marry for money in this movie. The Bridgertons like to marry for love, but a lot of them marry purely for money. <laughs> it's a good show. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Okay. Let's quickly just cut off all the, it, there's a little bit of white going around. So let's just trim that off. So we don't have to deal with any of the white on either one of these. We will be using both. And I printed this out onto cardstock. So you're going to use cardstock for this whole thing if you want to make one of these. Maybe I should call them secret pocket armoires. If I should even call them armoires, but it just reminds me of an armoire. Okay, so we're just gonna continue to get all the white off of these. So when we trim everything up, we are good to go. Just 
just one second. Oops, just a second, guys. Okay, so we got all of the uh, white lines trimmed off around it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create the back of this, okay? So the back of this is <coughs> five inches. So we need to decide what we want for the back and what we want for the doors. I think I want this for the back. And we'll use that for the doors. So it needs to be five inches um, in width. So let's do that. Let's decide what we want to have on here. Definitely want this. Okay, so let's do five inches. Oh, shoot. You know what? I want to keep this prosperity part in there. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, yeah, if we do it this way, we can keep the prosperity part in there. Okay. Oh, excuse me. And we can save this for something else wonderful. All right, so five inches there. So this is the back. And the length needs to be eight inches. So we need to cut this down to eight inches. This might be close to, no, it's not close to eight inches. Okay. And see, this right here is a perfect little tag. So put this aside because that'll be a tag that goes inside. So we have the back. Okay, so here's our back five inches wide, eight inches long, okay? Then we need to create some um, doors that are two and a half inches wide. So we need to do two and a half inches twice. So let's do that. If you don't have one of these paper slicers, this is a Fiskars, I would definitely get yourself one if you wanna do junk journaling or just crafting period. It really, really, um, it really, really um, makes things so much faster, so much easier, and just more precise, and just more fun, because now you get to do things so much more quickly and so much more easily. Okay, so we'll sit, put that one aside. Make sure you save all your bits to do different things, make tags, and make other projects. <coughs> And then, oh, wait, these need to be uh, eight inches because they're too long still. Okay, we gotta, we gotta make these eight inches long. Let me see what I wanna trim off. I wanna trim off this part. I don't wanna trim off any of it, but this is the part that I'd rather trim off. Okay. And let's make this door. These are the doors. We'll make the doors eight inches, both of them. Let me make sure what I wanna trim off here. Okay. So let me show you how it's going to look. So it's going to look like this. See, so those will be your doors. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do, okay, so before we start putting everything together, let's go ahead and do our, do our edges really quickly. I'm gonna use my dark brown which I love. Okay. Hope you guys are liking this um all this this series with all this Bridgerton inspired junk journaling different different projects that I'm doing and of course it doesn't just have to be used for this Bridgerton all the projects that I've shown you can be just be used on any junk journal I'm having a blast okay so we've got all of our pieces inked up the next thing we want to do is we want to put the doors on what did I just say like this is this what we're gonna do 
just making sure yeah okay and before I do that to make it look more like an armoire door let's take um, you can either take and round the corners here and here just by doing it with your scissors or if you have a corner chomper you can just round them out but I have a round I have one that just rounds out the corners but I also have ones that's a little bit fancier so I'm going to use the deco on the corners but like I said if you don't have a corner chomper you can simply just round it with your uh, scissors so I don't know if you can see that but see how the it looks this looks so much nicer to go like that okay all right so the next thing we need to do is we need to create let's put this aside for a second we need to create some um, I've already created them but we will um, but I'll show you what I did let's see if they're right here or not where are they Okay, I got a piece of cardstock out and my scoreboard, and we're gonna create some uh, flaps. And I have a better word than flaps, but it's not coming to me right now. So we're gonna call these flaps for right now. <laughs> Every one inch on your scoreboard, you're going to score. This is another tool, like the paper slicer, that I would get. They're probably both around $20, $25, maybe $30 now. But definitely go to Michael's or Joann's and use a coupon. So th the, the other thing was a paper slicer. This is a scoreboard. I try to like let you guys know what I'm using, what it's what it's called, how much it costs, where to get it. Because when I very first started doing all this stuff, I was like, okay, what is this? What is that? Where do I get it? How much is it? So I kind of try to always let you guys know. For those who don't know. Okay, so to create our flaps every two lines you're gonna cut okay and we need two of these and you're gonna cut right on the line okay so one two cut out the next one I want a little cricket with this one I like to see that a little straighter there we go all right, so let's cut out this one here. And if you're not understanding what I'm doing right now, you're gonna understand it in just a second, as soon as I'm done cutting it. And make sure I have a, like two different sets of these that I just created. So keep those, I keep them right above where I'm at so I can always have these flaps whenever I need them. So see the line right there? There's a line right there. Well, you're gonna see it now. It's a perfor that line is that perforated line is what we created when we scored it. So again, there's your line that we scored, and now you have your flaps. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to put double stick tape on both sides of this one and both sides of this one. Okay. So I'm gonna start it out, show you guys, then I'll go off camera and do all the taping because the tape takes a little bit of time nothing hard it just takes a little time okay so I put it like where it's closed at I put tape there and then I also put tape on this edge so I put it on the edge that's folded and on the open edge on both and do it on both sides Okay, so see how we put the tape on both sides? Now I'm going to put the double stick tape on this side, and then I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do it off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gotten the double stick tape on both, si on both sides, okay? On the folded edge and, and the open, okay? So, and I get my double stick tape from Dollar Tree. It's the best deal going for double stick tape, um, and it is a really good tape, so... All right, so let's get this off. I also got this tool at Dollar Tree. Isn't this fabulous? 
for a dollar twenty-five. This is great. Get this in your life. I love um, when I make my books to put holes in things, or to, uh, when you're going to make your uh, journal. This is a, like a little all too, so it would work great as an all. It's fabulous. Really nice and sharp. Okay, so on the okay, not on the rounded edge where we rounded it, but on the straight edge is where this is going to go. Oh, you know what? I meant to cut this down. I didn't cut it down. It's okay. We can cut it down now. Could have saved myself some time and tape, though. But anyway, it's fine. Okay. So put this down. Now, I should have cut this in advance, but I forgot. See how it's a little long? There we go. No major. So... Now, before we go to this side, before we take the tape off and put this on the um, back, let's. Uh, what I like to do is I like to take this color here, Antique Linen, Distress Oxide by Tim Holtz, and just right, right from the pad, hit this, and it gives it that nice aged look. And I love doing it right from the pad when I want to do a lot of coverage. And if you want to, you could always take um, some Tim Holtz Distress Ink and go around the edge, or just take this and just kind of go around the edge a little bit, which I think I'll just, whatever's left on here is what I'll use. Perfect. I love that aged look, that vintage aged look. There we go. Okay, see how that looks very vintage and aged? Okay. Let's take and put it on the card. We're gonna first take our double stick tape off of here. Bam! You guys, these are so fun to make. I love making them. I'm still trying to think of the name for these secret pocket armoires I don't know okay so now we're gonna take that and we're gonna tape it right down to the side there we go make sure that's in there good beautiful look how pretty that looks so vintage I love it Okay, so our next one, our next victim, but before we do it this time, we're going to this time trim this off in advance. Let's just go like this. No, nope, we're not going to do it like that. I'm going to measure it like this. Okay, so let's take the double stick tape off. There we go. There we go. And on the straight edge, which is over here, and that's why you want to round your corners where the where the where the two doors meet. That's why you want to round your corners beforehand, just so that it keeps you from being, getting confused where you're at. So make sure you round your corners either with the scissors or your corner chomper before you get to this part, and that'll keep it so you know exactly where you're at, what side you need to put this flap on. Otherwise, it can get confusing. Okay, and again. Let's take our antique linen, Distress Oxide. Now, do you have to use Distress Oxide? If you don't have Distress Oxide or any Distress Oxide, Distress Oxides or the antique linen, you could just take a, um, you could take any other color. You could take um, any of your other inks and do it. Um, so it doesn't have to be Distress Oxide. It doesn't have to be the antique linen. 
you could just leave it white. If you just wanted it white and when you open it up and that's fine with you, leave it white. It's, oh, it's all up to you. It's your junk journal. You can do what you want. I just like to show you what I'm doing. My little tricks are. And let's go around the edges here again with what we have left on here, which is a lot. I have a lot of ink on here. Okay. So now let's take the tape off of here. Let's take that right and put it line it up with the edge so it's always the folded edge that gets lined up with the edge okay all righty there we go and let's open it up and just really make sure that we've got it good and ready inside of here you know what I think did I just mess up Oh, I sure did. Oh, you know what we needed to do? Oh. All right, well, I just created another way, but let me show you what I did before. I put it on the outside, you guys. Look. Oh. So I was like, why is it so little in here? But, okay, so let me just correct myself. You can either do it inside like this, like we did, or you can go ahead and you can um, put it on the uh, back side, okay? And since this looks a little messy back here because it got a lot of stuff on it, let's go ahead and do a little distress so this looks good on the back side because it'll just add to the distress. Some of the ink got on the card in the back. There we go. I just love <laughs> when I make mistakes on a video. <laughs> Actually, I kind of do like when I make mistakes sometimes on a video because it just shows you how to correct things or how to accept things. So we're just going to accept that we did that. And in fact, to make up for that, let's just add to this here, okay? So when you're, if you're going to do it, let me show you, if this is your, um, your little scored piece here that you're going to put on here, you need to put the tape, um, on the back, you need to put the tape inside, okay, here so that it can go like this. Okay. So this can go on the back. So sorry about that, you guys. That was kind of a major thing. You know what? Let's do this. We can correct this even more. Let's, do I have another piece of paper? I'm gonna grab another piece of cardstock and what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna place another piece of cardstock inside of here since I didn't do my ledges right, okay? So let me pause you guys and I'll be right back. All right, so we need to, I'm going to use this right here. This is the, um, these are the dividers for my planner, the cardstock from that. And it's a nice weight cardstock. So we're going to cut this five by eight and that'll fit right in the center here. So we need to do it five inches like we did before. And then we need this to be eight inches. And then we're 
go ahead and put this in the center here. This should fit good. If it doesn't, nope. We're just a little bit, just a little bit. So let's take off a sliver. Let's take off another little sliver. There we go. So now we got this to fit in here. Very good. So we're going to just use some double stick tape. Doesn't matter which side because they're both the same. say double stick tape glue stick okay okay perfect and so now this is how it should look when you open this up okay wonderful And because I got my back, because my mat was a little bit dirty, we're also going to I'm going to use my script stamp. And I love when the script stamp doesn't. Um, when the script stamp has little areas missing, I'm good with that. Because I think it looks more vintage when you have little areas of things missing. There we go. Now look how nice that looks on the back. So if your mat's dirty or whatever and you get a little gunk on the back, especially being white like that, and just distress it out and then go ahead and uh, use your script stamp on it. Okay. Like I said, I like when things happen like this because then I can help you to fix it. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to put the pocket in here, okay? Um, but before we do that, I want to want to show you guys so you're not confused on what I should have done, okay? Let me get out another one of these. I'm going to cut out another flap just so I can show you what I should have done so I didn't have to make that correction. Okay. All right, let's just pretend like this is my flap, okay? Like this is the, this is the, let's just pretend that, um, yeah, this is the flap here, okay, on this. Um, you want to put your double stick tape on it here and then tape it on. Okay. Just like, like we did, just like we did. Let me just do this and cut this off so it doesn't get confusing for you. Okay. So your double stick tape goes on top of here. Then you go ahead and put your flap on top of here. But instead, so then what you want to do, instead of putting the, t the tape here, you want to put the tape inside put it in the crux here and on the outside. So the fold it, put it near here and here, okay? Then that way you can go like this, okay? So then you can go like this and like that. And then see, this ends up on the back. And then you can still, again, take your um, antique linen and antique linen the whole thing, okay? All right, but now you have two ways of doing it. So if you mess up like I did, now you know you can just take another piece of paper or another piece of cardstock or whatever you're going to use and put it right down the center. Okay? All right. 
So I wanted to make sure you guys understood that because I'm like, I probably confused the heck out of some people. Sorry about that. All right, so now, yeah, this is five inches, right? Yeah. All right, so now let's get a pocket that's going to be cut five inches. I have a bunch of little scrap pieces over here that we want to use. Try to use a scrap piece and cut it down five inches. Let me see what I have. Oh, you know what? We're going to do something else before we do the pocket. Okay, so this is the piece we're going to cut down to five inches. We can do the pocket right now. Let's just do the pocket now. Okay, do I want to use this part or do I want to use this part? This part. Okay, so let's cut this down to five inches. I'm cutting it down to five inches and then I'm just taking off just a tad bit more, just a little bit. Because we want it to fit in, we want it to fit in inside of here, right? And we want this to be able to still fold. See, so it's still a little bit too wide. So go five inches and then just trim off a tiny amount. Just the tiniest of amount, see? Let me show you. Just like that. Until you get this to fit in here. Perfect. And to, even if it's a little bit, um, if it's a little bit, if it's a little bit shorter on each side, that's fine. Because you want this, to, you just want to be able to, for this to fit in and fold in. So if you have a little bit of space here and a little bit of space there, that's fine. All right, so let's ink it up. So I hope I didn't confuse anybody. And I hope my when I showed you how to correct it and then show you how I should have done it, I hope that is, um, I hope everyone understands. Okay. Oh, also, we're going to have, let's see what we want for the, this is going to be the top. Okay. Also, let's go ahead and corner chop the corners. I'm going to use my deco, the same one. Again, if you don't have a corner chomper, you can just go ahead and take your scissors and just round the corners a little bit. Alrighty, so now we need to put tape here, here, and here, okay? Our double stick tape. And you do, you get the double stick tape at Dollar Tree in the, um, in the uh, craft section. And they pretty much always have the tape. Um, but they do sometimes um, run out at the stores. So just keep yourself a little stockpile. I keep, every time I get down to five, I buy five more. So I try to keep maybe 10 on hand, which I know sounds obnoxious, but it's horrible. Dollar Tree's not consistent with everything. Sometimes they run out of stuff and they'll be, it'll be, you won't see it for a month. Even stuff like this, which they usually have around. So, just keep yourself a little stockpile. I'm not saying you have to stock as much as I do, but. But if you're a crafter or a junk journaler, you understand. <laughs> we all like our little stockpiles, so we can just go to our stockpile when we need something. We don't have to run to the store every time we need something, so. Most of you guys, I know for sure, understand. Okay. And when you get done with things, you might want to wipe your mat down. That's how I got my the back of my card kind of mucky. But like I said, I wanted to look aged anyway, so we're good. I don't do anything perfect. Everything I do is aged or um, shabby. So that's more of the style I like. So, so now we have a nice little pocket in here. So there's our pocket. Yay! So when you open it up, voila, and there'll be tags in there, okay? But we need to put the little um, little pieces so that we have a door, right? 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do, let me make sure this is the one I want. Okay, with our little round punch, this is five eighths of an inch. Um, I also have a one inch, which you can use. Is this a one inch? What is it? I don't know what it is actually. Okay, see, I'm using the smaller one, but you can use this size too. Okay, and this one's five eighths. I'm not sure what this one is because it doesn't say. All right, we need to cut some little circles out. So I have a lot of different papers here. I'm just trying to see what I want to cut the circles out of. I'm trying to think if I want to do it with, you know what? I, yeah, I want it to kind of match. Okay, so I have some um, paper. I have some paper left over from everything we've done. So we're going to do it out of this. So find some scrap piece of cardstock or what you like one of the things you've cut out. Um, you could use some coffee dyed paper. But I really want my button. These are like going to be little buttons and I want the little buttons to match. So, all right. So go around and just ink your buttons. This really on the buttons makes a difference. Let me give you real quick. Okay. Makes a difference. See how not much nicer that looks? So this is what they look like before you ink them. I know it's a little thing, but it's those little things that make a difference. Okay, so there we go. Now the next step we wanna do is just get yourself a book, put these two together Put your two little circles together, okay? Put them on a book or a magazine. Get yourself a pencil. Try to find the center of this circle, of these little circle, of these little buttons, okay? And just make a little, like a little dot in the center with the pencil. And then you wanna take your pokey tool, which I'm gonna use this one from Dollar Tree, and you're gonna poke a hole, and it's gonna go through both of them. See, now we have a hole through both of them. And by doing that, that makes sure that everything lines up when we go to do all this. Okay. So let's bring back this here. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our glue stick, put some glue on the back side of this little button Place this where you where you want this at. And what I like to do is I like to place it just a little bit away from the center here. So let me show you where I placed it. See? And then you want to line that up with this one over here. Take your second one. Okay, I don't really want this much glue on here. Okay, is it going to come off? Jeez, I never had that happen before. Okay, anyway. Line it up so they're across from each other just approximately, okay? So let me show you. So they're approximately across from each other, okay? And then you want to poke a hole, that hole that you just made, poke it now so it goes through this part, okay? It goes through the door. Now you can take this off. You just, you're just uh, using the, the glue just so it stays in place so you can make your hole, okay? And there we go. And then you want to take it off. Because we're not trying to glue them on. We're just using that so it stays on while we make our holes. Take a paper towel, wipe off that glue. And then off the back of the buttons, just wipe off the glue on the back of the buttons. Wipe off the glue on the back of the buttons. Okay? If you just wipe it off, it's good enough. Because we're not trying to glue them on, we're going to, I'll show you how we're putting them on. So we need some brads. Look at this beautiful container, you guys. Dollar Tree. They had these at, um, at um, for Mother's Day. I got two of them. Well, I actually got more. I, I ended up picking up six of them. I didn't think I picked, I only picked up four. I did pick up six. Okay. And the reason I picked up so many, you guys, is because I have a craft room and an art room. And then um, 
also for my makeup and stuff. So I'm just filling them so easily. And then this one has buttons and other little knickknacks that I'm keeping here. Plus, I love how vintage they look. Okay, so we need two brads. And if you can, get the brads. I got these from Staples. Get the ones that are long. Okay? Because, and then stick this through here. The ones that are long, it they raise up a little bit, so it'll be easier for you to get your string on. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. All right, so now you're going to put this through that hole that we created. Okay? There we go. So for this, I like the brads that are bigger. They have smaller brads, but I like just the regular ones you get like at the office supply store. Okay, so now you see that. Okay, again. Oh, shoot. Just a second, I dropped it. Okay. So see there's that hole there. Put your bread through. Then put your bread through the hole that we made here. And by taking all those little steps we just took, which are easy steps, everything's going to line up. Okay? All right. Come apart, Brad. Feels like I'm talking to a guy or something. I'm just talking to my Brad right here. Usually they. Is this one defective or something? Huh. Usually they it come it separates a lot easier. Oh, there we go. Okay, I got it. Finally. Okay. Go like that. Okay, so we have our brads like that. Okay. There we go, and our door is closed. And then, and then I'm gonna use some cotton. Again, you can get this, this cotton I didn't get at Dollar Tree, but you can get your, you get cotton at Dollar Tree. So pick yourself up some cotton or some, um, I don't like using twine, twine's a little thick. I would get the cotton if I was you. If you already have um, the kitchen twine, you can get that, you can use that too. But I'm really loving the, um, I'm really loving the cotton. Okay, so we want this piece over here to be about, to be short, okay? This needs to be shorter. So we're gonna go around once, go around twice, okay? Now, because those brads were a little bit longer, like the, this part right here is longer, it makes this sit up a little bit so that I can really easily get around the, um, the brad. I can get around the little button. So, um, if you can, that's why I was saying get these kind. And I said that, and actually this one's a little bit, needs to come up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So now what you want to do, I'm going to cut this off right now. Because you're around twice there, now we want to go around both of them. If you, can't, if you have to lift up, you can lift up after I just said that. But once, twice three times there we go and you want this piece to remain longer than this piece you want this piece to be a little shorter and the reason you want this piece to be shorter is then you know what's the piece to open this up see this is the piece that you always use to open it up and then you stop there because you don't want to unwind it right all right so let's open this back up and let's put some tags in here and then we will be done so we are very close to being done. Um, I'm going to create some tags right on the fly with you. Remember we had this piece left over? So let's... Yeah, this is good. Um, let's continue with this corner chomper. So I'm going to chomp all the corners. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to ink the edges, but I would normally ink the edges, but for the sake of time, we're not going to do that. And then take my hole punch, punch a hole, center it as much as you can, and now we have a tag, right? And you could put something in here. You could put some fun fur or some twine or whatever. 
and actually I'm not going to put anything in here because I want this to be able to sit really flush so if I do put anything on there it won't sit flush so I'm going to put that tag in there this can be like a little bookmark so let's just cut this and make this a little bookmark you may need to turn this down because it's probably going to be too it's going to stick out too much yeah we'll stick we'll trim it off to here so on the fly I'm just making little tags and little bookmarks to go in here so there's a little bookmark there's a tag and let's make one more tag and this can be a this can be two tags right here so I'm going to put this on my paper slicer Cut this in half and we'll have two tags. Bam! And again, we're going to use my corner chomper. And this time I used my uh, stub side. So the stub side looks like that for the edge. It's kind of cool. All right, so then let's use um, my hole punch. When you punch the hole, to me, it just makes it look more like a tag. And I'm really loving this right here. It's not cool. That's called the stub. I like how that makes that tag look. So we made these two quick tags that you can journal on. We'll put those in. And there we go. And you know what? We'll put the bookmark. Let's center the bookmark like that. There we go. Look how fabulous that looks. Isn't that cool, you guys? I love it. Bam, bam. So you open up the secret armoire. Bam. And then when you go back, you just go like this to close the secret on moi. I guess I'm calling it the secret on moi, so that's what we're going to call it. Okay. And there we go. So we have this one that we just made together today. And then I made this one. And I made this one. So fabulous. These are so fun, you guys. And these can go in your journal. Let me bring this up a little bit. These can go in your journal. So this is my uh, Bridgerton inspired junk journal. And these are all of my uh, printables that I used. These I printed out on paper so that I can um, so that I could um, collage them onto my book. My journal. So let me find a page in here that okay here's a blank page. You can take this and just center it and I and so what I have for my for my uh, printables and for my junk journal it, they are the size of um, eight and a half by 11 and I made the pages like I think 15 of them are done um, landscape horizontally so you can fold them and make them into uh, signatures okay and then I have some vertical that so you can do stuff like tags and envelopes and stuff like that but like at least 15 of the pages maybe a little bit more are done horizontally um, so that you can just fold them up into signatures okay so when I created this I made it so this would fit right in here and have a little bit of space so that we don't get into I was just watching this girl what is her name she calls this the butt crack <laughs> she's southern and she taught I love the way she talks and she calls this the butt crack <laughs> so we don't get into the butt crack so this fits in just perfect how cool is that and you can glue that right in or if you have a pocket here you could take this whole thing and put it right into a pocket you could also put this 
on the inside of your junk journal. How cool would that look? Okay. It even look cool as your last page. I, I, the pages are so pretty that I don't want to, I'll find like a blank page like this to do it and put it in. So you can put it in just like that and glue that in. So if you glue it in, I guess it doesn't matter that you did this, does it? <laughs> but you know what? In case you want to take this whole thing and slide that right into a pocket, you can do that too. Okay. So I guess it doesn't matter that I got so fancy on the back, does it? Because you're probably going to end up gluing this onto a page, which I think is fabulous. And then you can just open this up. I think that's your best bet is try because I think put trying to put this in a pocket, the pocket might be too tight. So gluing this on a page, I think is beautiful. And I also think gluing it on the inside of your junk journal could be really fabulous too. Okay. So let me know how you guys like this. My little secret armoise for junk journals. That's what I'm going to call it. These are so fun. I'm going to sit here for the rest of the afternoon and make quite a few more of these. Because I think these are fabulous. Alright you guys, that is it for this one. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I was going to show you guys really quickly. These are the papers. Uh, the printables. So these are the printables and see how I folded them uh, horizontal I folded them horizontally okay so they're printed so you can just fold them right into signatures and what I do is um, I copy mine onto cardstock and um, on the back of it because they're white and I know I'm gonna want to decorate them I just use the antique linen again right off from the thing like this and go like that and that's how I got my pages to look like this and in between, I put in coffee dyed paper, okay? And I actually use paper. Some places I use coffee dyed cardstock, but a lot of places I use the coffee dyed paper. So that's how I get the different papers in here. And you can do whatever you want. If you wanna add different papers in here, your own papers, papers you make, coffee dyed papers, um, mix my printables with other printables or other papers that you have, it's up to you. Um, or you don't, and to join the, um, to join the uh, Bridgerton uh, Junk Journal Challenge, you do not have to buy my printables. But do join the group. It's called Our Magical Little Place. Show us, come there, show us um, your junk journal, show us uh, the pages you created, show us your cover. Um, if you decide to do any of the projects that I show with my printables, come sh share that with us. But also, if you're just a crafter, you can come and join the group, period, and just share and be inspired. If you have an Etsy shop, if you have a YouTube channel, you can share links, okay? So these are my printables here. And there's a clickable link below. It's called Our Magical Little Place is the name of the group. Um, and for my Etsy shop, it's called My Fairy Treasures. And if you want any of the printables, every five pages is two bucks. And um, there's a clickable link below. So these are the printables. So I just wanted to show you the printables if you want to get them, okay? There's another printable there. And this is coffee dyed paper and I made a little flap here and I made a little pocket there. All this has to be decorated still, but there's another printable. This is um, a paper bag that we created with beautiful um, lace and uh, heavy gesso through a stencil. And I showed how to make those early, uh, yesterday or the day before. These are clusters, I glued this on the back. so that um, and I have a video on how to make the clusters and I have a video on how to make the paper bags so the uh, decorated paper bags paper bag pockets I guess I should call them so just check out my videos these are all recently done videos uh, again my printables 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 okay so just to give I won't go through my whole junk journal but just to show you what the printables look like okay now we're done so if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up, any comments or questions, leave them below. Come visit me on Facebook and Instagram. Join the group, Our Magical Little Place. And if you want the printables, it's My Fairy Treasures Etsy shop, and it's in the, um, it's in the description box. All right, I'm going to shut up now, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys.